All right, guys, what's up? Time for a market recap. And uh, safe to say from last video, uh, we were correct again. Thank goodness. So let's go over a little bit of the conditions of the market and our over under. If you guys did not see the last video, please check in the description. I'll put a part one link uh, there for what we said would happen today at open and through the course of today. So we had Fibonacci's um, 419.78. And moving average, moving average being one of my favorite indicators. Um, and we have a system here that went from a high, came down and filled that weekly gap that we talked about, right? Just for a small recap, came to the 100 EMA, boosted to the 50, and then under the 10. So as long as it's riding under the 10, we always fail the 100 and come back to the 200 SMA. And we are looking at the 3030. That was a great three. And with that being said, we have a opportunity to uh, pick up our targets. So yesterday, if you watched the video in the description for the past, we predicted the 1618 Fibonacci would be our over under. We were either going to start flying back up or stay under the deviation plus one, under the weekly gap, under everything else that we had seen in the video and called for 17. So I targeted the 200 SMA 3030, right? And as long as we continued through the 100 EMA, that was going to be a, a easy set. So we alerted that in the pre-market. We alerted it yesterday on the video. And as we came through for the trade day, right here is where I got short and I wrote it all the way down right about here. I always like to get out right about ahead of target. So we had 17 to 20 points on MES on the small account. Netted about $1,140 today green. So uh, again, that was with a $1,500 account. I'll be coming out with that series quite soon here um, after this week with uh, the small account challenge. I went back into Ninja Trader, which will be our futures platform of choice. And uh, I'll get into all that after that. But I will be teaching you how to make money with no money. That was with a $1,500 account uh, from last week into this week. And I am now at over $3,000. So a little bit of ES trading today, which I'm going to stick to MES only on the challenge. So back to the recap. Um, so it was over under the 1618. As long as we stayed under this, Fibonacci sequences will always backtrack to the 100% like a magnet, right? How do those work? So that magnet is going to come back down to, I have a weekly 100 and the hidden Fibonacci, which I can't really explain to you guys here for free. Um, the hidden Fibonacci tells me a lot of sequences that help me play this out. And we do a lot of live recap and we have video lessons in our uh, Teachable and Discord uh, for that. So um, how would we get for a confirmation? We got a perfect confirmation of tag here. We have 419.67, 418.50s are two very important daily levels as well that we worked with uh, and the, on the SPY. But moving averages are most important for me. So this green 100 EMA here in the 3030, and that's pretty much all I watched today. As long as we were under the 1618 Fibonacci and had downside applicable, from the 100 EMA, we were gonna come back down to 417 and the 200 SMA. And we called a bounce point here. So we said loop in along this section, as long as it holds above the 200 SMA on the 3030 and you would have a good look. Now let's look at our indicators at the bottom and why we did what we did. So second day short continuation. I know this looks familiar because the short call in my other prediction videos, if you go to the other four, we did the same thing when stuff started getting into the plus two 30, 30 deviation back here. Same with the pre-market, not today, but obviously uh, uh, last trade day, um, we had that, that 423 hit a little bit over, but still you can see how close it is to the plus two deviation. Uh, it's very rare that we get outside of that on a 30, 30. Now, these are custom codes that we do run for custom colors uh, at Boiler Room Trading. And uh, I do have the link that Teachable and those indicators are in there as well if you're interested in TOS trading with our custom indicators. So um, as we move forward, the 100 EMA was our um, docking resistance. Target was 417, double Fibonacci 100, and the catch up of the 3030. Why? Because we needed confirmation, and we are confirmational traders. As we look back, we've seen the 200 break up and force squeeze up here. We got the Biden debt ceiling news. We said it was going to be a mini sell the news event, hype news, whatever you want to do. And we were going to come back down. So we had the top there, easy kill. 100 EMA back to 50, easy kill, 200. Okay, now what? Okay, well, in the prediction video, we still had a lot of upside pertaining. So this is what I'm going to watch for now, the 10 SMA daily. Okay, one day, 10 SMA on SPY. That is this hard dash blue line, that large one that looks like a price level, but this is uh, on the 3030 and it's intercoded into any shorter time frame. Again, we have custom codes to do this. So this daily right here, this blue hard dash line, that is a daily 10 SMA and it's showing 
the representation on the 3030. If I go to any time frame, it shows me exactly where that is, and this is how we have it custom coded. Go to the five minute, there's that 10 SMA daily. Go to the one minute, there's that 10 SMA daily, right? So it's pretty handy. Uh, Saves you on chart space. Uh, so when we're on the 30-30 here again, what are we gonna do? Well, the 50 is slowly closing the distance right now, okay? So still downtrend imminent. The 10 SMA has crossed. We look that as downtrend, and that's why I said if it goes through the 100 EMA and through the 10, uh, we should magnet to the 200 SMA. That is a very big deal. And I know I'm repeating a lot, but repeating helps get that built into your brain, right? <laughs> and then now the 10 SMA daily in the 417 target of today's short. So we were short here, out here at that 417. We are now looking for the continuation probable. So do we wait for that 50 to cross overnight through the uh, ES futures, we're going to watch the 50 SMA go through the 100, and then we're going to come back up from the 200 bounce, run back into that 50 100 cross, and then potentially break the 200 continued downtrend. That's option one. Um, I'm still waiting on the big melt up. I'm pretty adamant on the melt up. We don't have catalysts for this melt up yet. So if we do continue down, it's going to be under 417, under the 10 SMA daily. This is your over under level. This is just like I gave you yesterday. If we opened up under that 1618 Fibonacci and under that 100 EMA for flow, we were going to come down to that 417, predicting that market move. Now, same thing with here, 10 SMA daily, 417. That is our huge directional pick. And again, I messed it up before, but let's look at our indicators. And what's going to give us this? Now, our favorite three, triple threat. Look at our videos on how to use these if you have not. We had a absolute turnaround at the pre. And now for our live trade today, what happened? Well, look at that bottom of the channel. Look on how to use RSI. We have a video on how to use this, on how we use it, channeling in the 50. Not a lot of people uh, use this method as a lot of these developed systems that we have done has been built in 13 years of us trading. Um, live and profitable for over 10. So um, we have the bottom side of the RSI. We have no buy wave TTM. Again, check those videos. And the crack of the center line on the Mac. And Mac was not very helpful today, but we had a few instances where the Mac helped us out right at the early there where we, we had the distance. And I was said I would explain this to my group here in chat. And the distance, and this is why I was so adamant on that short, is because of the distance of the first cross back down. And what I mean by that is the distance it had from the zero line, okay? So you notice that big bull run up here where that zero line is, right? Way up in the 1.4, 1.6 area. We crossed the center line and we were coming into this cross right here. Okay, it was just starting to cross the moving averages to the downside here, and we had what? Extension, right? We had room to go down. So the second the oscillation waves were beat out, we had indecision, indecision, then we had a cross, which we already, you know, we had other indicators like the RSI and other stuff telling us we were trending down, plus we were correct about the 161, it has to back test to the 100 fib, so on and so forth, unless ungodly worldly news comes out. Uh, to trump that, uh, that is the TA of it. So we came back down, we hit it on the head, and we had another loop down on the max. So that was the whole reason that we had short today against any kind of intraday one minute, five minute reversals. It was going to stay very cool. Now let's look at the reversal point. We waited for the 30 30, 200 SMA, okay? And you can see where the long came in as well. So on the smaller time frame, I would have been watching eh, maybe a 15 or a five. We're going to do it on the 31st, but 31st as in not 31st, but right now we had a uh, oscillation back end. Okay. So the heavy red turned into dark red oscillation was coming up. RSI told us a little bit faster where this, this um, got back into normal territory. We were in aggressive selling uh, on some of the intraday charts. Let's go to the five um, on this deep, deep, um, bottom here in 19, 20, 18 there, that is a exponential hard sell on the five minute. So when you see that, uh, look long. Okay. And then we called this exact move up. We had deviation here. So if you look at the five day, one minute, we have another minus one. We don't go too far out of plus one, minus one without abrupt catalysts. Remember on these cattle, on these, uh, deviations, here's your hit. Beautiful support. We had all higher lows here. Uh, the RSI, beautiful backside TTM, and a cross on the max. So this was all longable to the backside up. So this was our long side. We said as long as it gets over that 33rd, we're gonna have a long back. I did not expect it to get all the way back up uh, to this move, but definitely back to that 200 SMA intraday, five minute, okay? So we topple back over the 10. Now we're back to the over under point. Let's take a peek at the RSI. We're back on the bottom side. Eh, okay, TTM's increasing back on the negative side. So that faulty, um, pretty abrupt, uh, faulty breakout, false breakout crash right at that last 15 minutes uh, really did some damage to the intraday indicators because we were trending on all accounts 
in the 50 range, right? We're on the top side of these channels on the Mac and the RSI. Now, what that what does that bring? Well, does it do a false cross and a low? So you're gonna look to your left, you're gonna see this low. You're gonna look for the higher low somewhere in here if it wants to if it wants to pick up and gets the confirmation, right? The TTM is gonna do the same, and the RSI is gonna rebuttal a little bit, and it's gonna go from here this low to a higher low, and it's gonna get back into the top channel and trend. Now, I'm not saying long or short instant, I really like to watch confirmational price action, then there's no guessing, there's just trading, we're not gambling, it's just trading. So, um, but we did hit the primo support here. If we happen to lose 417, let's talk about that first because we know what's going on to the upside. It's 424 uh, to the 1618 and above, and FOMO breakout from there. And I'm more long biased on the melt up than anything. Let's go look at the uh, downside of things. And the downside of things is gonna be a little harder to see. So let me cut back to something easier. And the downside of the daily here, we're gonna chase down these gaps. We have a bunch of unfilled gaps here to our left, this being the widest one into the 408 area here. That unfilled gap accompanied by, oh, this one was filled here. And we have one more, maybe one more. I don't have my regular chart up, might not. Oh, it's already filled that one. So we have two. So the two um, melt up potential points, as we'll talk about those a little bit as well, are going to be gap dominated. So these gaps need to be filled. So even if we do have a little bit of a panic out, we get a catalyst, even if it only fills this gap right here, that would be best case scenario, actually, in my opinion, is where it would hold the 50 SMA daily, the gap fill right here at 408 on the daily chart. And then we would see an aggressive above 50 takeoff on RSI on that on that trend to go up towards hot. Now, um, the RSI on the daily matters a lot when you're at the 50 waypoint, the um, 30 low, 70 high, uh, a lot. And you can see last time way over here when it hit that 70, it had an abrupt top. Uh, RSI is very built, built very well. We have this upside metric cross here on Mac, and this is the daily chart. We have oscillation beating on the top side right here, doing very well on the TTM, and we are still above the 50 on the daily. Now this is a lower high, so we're still waiting for that confirmational um, move because right now here and here is high and lower high on the daily RSI. So if we do get that 50 to hold and it ends up being a higher low or even a sneaky lower low to, to freak out to the upside melt up, which I'm waiting on the catalyst could be Powell next week. I don't know what the catalyst is going to be, but we will be ready for it. That's for sure. Um, so that's the downside metric. Now the 30, 30 and the rest of the game here, uh, if it loses that 417, if it loses the uh, 200 SMA on the 3030 here, that's what you're going to watch for that. Just clip back and forth, choppy, ugly day, most likely tomorrow. Let me check on data for tomorrow. What do we got for news? What do we got for data here? A lot of Fed speaks. Collins, Bowman, we got Chicago PMI. Nope, that's Wednesday. That was today. We had the Chicago PMI. ADP, that's what it was. So ADP and jobs report. So the jolts, have you seen the jolt report today? He had a very wide jolts there. Um, a lot of job openings, not good. Uh, that's not strong. PMI manufacturing, ISM manufacturing. We got a lot of good data tomorrow. So hopefully if those are actually hot, we got to wait for the ADP and jobless claims. Uh, if that follows out the initial peg of jolts, we're going to have to see and watch what that ADP does in jobs because that's going to be the watch on catalyst because that's going to be... Uh, more fuel for Powell. And then obviously the federal funds rate hike is being priced in higher now, 75%. Do we have non-farm? Okay, important part on Friday. Okay, so Friday we do have that at 7.30 in the morning non-farm. So just all jobs for the rest of the week until Powell next week. Um, so big watch on those data points tomorrow. And it's going to get a little jumbly. Um, it's going to get a little traffic jammy. So please don't um, trade outside your means. The last two days were very simple again uh, for the calling. And then it comes down into uh, some metrics where we may need uh, a little bit of finesse to get through this. So um, watch the 417. It's our big over under marker. Watch your markers on the downside for those indicators and find that catalyst confirmation. So thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you guys on the next.